Welcome to St. Lucia, the town where some of Africa's fiercest wildlife live in and amongst town with no fences in between. So over here we have a small unassuming puddle and in this puddle we might find one of Africa's deadliest predators. Not quite, but close. Here we're situated in a lush coastal belt on the eastern part of South Africa and it's home to some of the most incredible reptiles, bird life and, well, wildlife. Check at this! <laughs> Imagine I just run and jump in there and then catch a crocodile, you know, because that's what we gotta do. The only reason why we're walking through this is to get to the beach so we can film and see crocodiles in their natural habitat. Having said that, there might be crocodiles here in and amongst this road. Road. But the reason we feel safe enough to walk through this is because I can see the bottom and I can see where the crocodiles are. Having said that, that doesn't mean it is safe. Now in the US you have raccoons, commonly referred to as trash pandas. Now in South Africa, our trash pandas are these curious creatures. George, the fervent monkeys. An intelligent primate that has become quite synerbic throughout its range. As you can see here, they kind of make the town their own little playground and they like to dig through trash, which is not so good. But they're still cute nonetheless. And this mommy wasn't too happy with me getting close to her baby, so she's like, quickly, run away! What's crazy is that a place like this, you can literally find crocodiles anywhere. I mean, I could have a four meter Nile croc right now, jump me and check this. Ah! I missed it, but there was a crab right here. And I gotta be careful because there are crocodiles here. This is an estuary, like the pristine habitat where humans share their habitat with wildlife. Or should I say vice versa because the wildlife was here first. A few days ago on the jetty, very similar to this over here, a few people were walking. Keep in mind, it was flooded, so not a wise thing to do. They were walking on it and wham! They nearly got taken out by a huge Nile crocodile. Luckily for them, they didn't suffer any bad consequences. A few days ago here on this very jetty, some people decided to take a swim in this body of water. There's about a three meter Nile crocodile that likes hanging around in this area so that's not the smartest thing luckily they are not harmed and nobody was eaten but they could have been eaten you've had some pretty crazy experiences with wildlife in and amongst the city can you tell us about the croc capture you did not too long ago literally on the beach oh yeah um so <laughs> yeah we had this crocodile on the beach a couple of times and uh people said oh no i gotta catch it and at that stage it wasn't really a problem just yet yeah but um after a while he actually ventured much further up the beach and eventually that we said no it, no we can't carry on like that this right here is the mouth of the estuary two to four kilometers out that way is where johan found a crocodile on the beachfront that swam across this beautiful ocean over here Saltwater crocodiles are not the only ones that can survive in the ocean from time to time. It does put a lot of strain on their bodies though because it builds up a lot of lactic acid and reptiles being ectothermic aren't able to go the distances something like a mammal would. So swimming in the ocean is tiring. So we caught him and basically he was right at the water's edge. I mean people are literally walking past. Yes, yeah in between to go to the ocean and there's this freaking <laughs> crocodile and it wasn't a small one either 3.48 meters for a crocodile just chilling amongst the beach yeah so basically this specific croc after catching it uh, looked it over you know as we do check the health and whatnot and I started recognizing special features on this yes. crocodile I actually realized it was a crocodile that I previously caught twice twice Twice, yeah. Oh, so he knows you? Yeah, he knows me very well. And I know her, to be honest. Oh, her? Yeah. One of the biggest females I've ever seen in this area. It's about three, four kilometers from the last beach. Yes. From the estuary mouth where he's supposed to be. And he was up there on oh, his way wow. down. And we got him, when we got there, he was halfway back. Completely tired, but at the water's edge. Was he swimming in the ocean? Or? Yeah, yeah. Because oh. of the mouth that opened, there was a lot of barbel and uh, tilapia that washed up because that sudden shock of salt killed them. Yes. So now, as you know, scavengers. So we had quite a few crocs, but this one, the main guy, was the big one. 
So I <laughs> got the cargo net between the water and the croc and it just started dragging up and yeah, as we were dragging you realized now, okay, this croc is very tired, which was in our favor, but for the catching side, not in our favor because as you know, the lactic acid, all that we just had to do it as quick as we could. Yes. Yeah, no, we got to it, grabbed it, and then yeah, we managed to get it to our Wow. Yeah. So the longest distance we've measured over land, movement over land, was 19 kilometers. Only God knows really how far they can, what their capability is of moving across land. And people say saltwater crocodiles are amazing. Well, now crocodiles can also swim in the ocean. 100%. And as I said, uh, that was not the first one. In two or three weeks, we came across about six or seven. This right here is where the crocodile was captured. And a few kilometers down that way is where it came from with the freshwater estuary system. So it came all this way along in the ocean just to find some nice tilapia to snack on. And then they had to move it because this is the main beach, as I said, where people love to come and swim. Obviously on the better days than this. This is quite crazy wind. In fact, crocodiles kill far more people each year than hippos do. It's a bit of misinformation that gets parroted around that hippos are far more deadly than crocodiles. But according to professional herpetologist Johan Maré and world-renowned author, he says there have been studies that show over the past hundred years they went to local individuals in rural places and have found that crocodile deaths are far exceeding the, the amounts of hippos that have killed people. Well, why does everything online say the complete opposite? That might just be because, well, crocodiles are generally in contact with people in extremely rural areas. So most of the deaths might not ever be reported. And that may be the cause for these misinformations and these drastically different numbers. I mean, look at this. Crocodile could be here and eating me. I think we got to find a crocodile. As the day progressed and the sun began to set, we went out exploring this beautiful, quaint little town in hopes of finding the creatures of the night from our cute little misunderstood friend who starts to slowly wake up ready to hunt the insects of the night under the glow of the moon's light. <laughs> did you see what I did there? I tried to become a poet. Well, guess what? You know it. I ain't a poet. Sorry. Okay, so what you've got to understand here is I'm waiting for two hippopotamuses where you see those lights ahead of you to come across my field of view. Hippos are dangerous, hippos do kill people, so you've got to be very, very cautious and no wildlife. So please do not do this. Okay, so this is hippos in the town and this is Bryce up a tree. And I'm going to be quiet now. Hippopotamus comes from Greek. Basically, it means river horse. They can run up to 30 kilometers an hour and are not super territorial on land. That doesn't mean they are not dangerous on land because they can be. So because this town is a bit of a tourist attraction, foreigners push their luck and chase hippos to get a quick pick. Well, don't do this. We need to understand that these are wild animals and knowing animal behavior is very important. So I'm not pressuring these animals, but letting them come up to me. Listen to them munching away. Hey, big guy. Oh my goodness. I'm so close right now. Okay, so the hippos are not too far away from me right now. What you got to understand is you got to really know wildlife and know the animal behavior before you do anything like this. And it is not something you should ever do whatsoever. I'm keeping my voice low. I'm watching the hippopotamuses. And guess what? I let the animals come to me. I didn't go towards the animals. I waited here for a while. I knew their pathway and I just stayed in the tree, <laughs> stayed safe and just kind of admired the animals because at the end of the day these are incredible beasts these are incredible beasts that can do some damage to you 
so watch out okay I'm just watching because it seems like they they're getting a little bit nervous there's a car that's very very close to them and you don't like you don't want the car to come up too close to them and I'm on this side so then they revert to this way and run back in a fear response because that can be dangerous towards me even though it's potentially the other car that's doing that so I gotta be careful this is wildlife right in the city I mean behind me here we have a wall full of holiday chalets so if you look at a hippo they may look a little pinkish well that pinkish stuff is a secretion that acts as a natural form of sunscreen made by the hippo quite something hey so as you can see it's the next day and this is the exact tree that I was in last night with the hippos and as you can see right behind me we have some chalets pretty cool right 